Okay, 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 hear me out. The other day I was searching on Amazon for what I think could well be the best deals in golf. And I must admit, I think I've found something that could well change how you buy your golf balls. Guys, these are the number one selling golf ball on Amazon. Before we get into it, guys, do me a favor, get in the comments below and let me know what golf ball do you use where do you buy them from and how much do you pay? These were £16.99 pence. and while you're in the comments section, and why not have a guess at exactly what you think these golf balls could well be? Are they going to be a big name brand? Are they going to be a smaller, more online retailer? And are they going to be good value for money or just cheap? Because that's two totally different things. Okay, okay, drum roll please, because the number one selling golf ball of 2023 on Amazon is of course the tailor-made RBZ soft golf ball. Now in the past, this used to be a Shrixen golf ball. The number one selling golf ball in years gone by on Amazon has been the Shrixen distance ball, but the tailor-made has now overtaken it. And like I said, £16.99 for a set of tailor-made golf balls around £1.42 a ball. Quick maths. Is this good value for money? So that's exactly what we're going to look at in today's video. I'm going to take them out here on the golf course. We're going to if that ever comes off. As if, who's put that there? So that's exactly what we're gonna find out in today's video. We're gonna take them out here on the golf course and test them, but also test them for numbers and see just how they do perform. You'll see technology-wise the feature a React Core for big distance with soft feel and Anima cover for responsive short game performance. And they are a 60 compression. Looks to me as though they are a two-piece golf ball. So you are generally getting what you're paying for here. That is the cheaper of rubbers or plastics for the cover. So first things first, let's get these golf balls out on the golf course and let's see just how they feel how they sound and how they perform. I'm not gonna lie, they feel a bit cheap and plasticky, but then for £16.99 a dozen, what more do you expect? You're still getting that huge brand name TaylorMade, and I will test these in the studio against the TaylorMade TP5, which is my ball of choice for in the studio anyway, so it's quite nice and easy to do. Right, let's see just how these balls launch, because sometimes when you don't get what's called a urethane cover, which is a more expensive plastic, that is the more kind of premium ball coating, the balls launch really high to start with, and then we're relying on a really low spin rate to try and get a long drive. Can we send it nice and low around this corner, even though it's just got that Ionima cover? I'll tell you what, that, is an absolutely perfect drive to kick things off. That was actually a little bit healy, but I was really impressed with how that ball launched nice and low. 16.99, Amazon. And I must admit guys, I'm a huge believer that does it really matter which golf ball you use depending how good you are? How good do you have to be for the golf ball to make a huge difference? If you just want to kind of load up your golf bag for a golf trip for your season and not spend a load of money, is Amazon the place to go? I'm also not gonna lie, I've been shopping on Amazon for a few things. Guys, get in the comments below, what do you think that is? And hit that subscribe button if you wanna see what's poking out of there. Okay, big thing for me there with that first shot was it actually felt quite good. It didn't feel firm, didn't feel like a rock, like a top flight. Who remembers those? You know what, that actually feels really good. Again, that's a tiny bit higher, actually struck that better. It doesn't look like it's gone a very, very long way. I don't know if the winds moved it a little bit. It was a little bit cutty, but I feel like maybe a more performance enhanced ball would ball through the wind a little bit more there. That's something which you can't test inside and you have to come out here on the golf course to do. The ball's still in play. It's not a bad drive at all, realistically. Let's try and play a draw with this. Try and counteract that wind. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So after three shots, the feedback, I'll show you exactly where all those balls have finished. The feedback so far, well, to be honest, whilst I am a Yorkshireman and I do love a deal, I'm still a huge believer that you get what you pay for. They didn't feel fantastic. They certainly didn't feel as good as a Pro V1 as a TP5, but then you can buy three dozen of these for that same price as one dozen of the higher end ball. So who's really winning there and what ball would you choose if you were given the chance of maybe investing that money you save into maybe golf lessons, into maybe green fees, into golf trips, 
into to your personal life, into maybe not your golf, maybe into your wife, your kids, into going out for meals. I know all this is kind of quite a strange thing to say, but everything's expensive at the moment. If you can save a little bit here and there, then maybe, maybe the worst ball is the best ball, especially when you get consistency levels. I had to stop showing you this, like that. Two balls in the fairway, the middle ball is over there in the rough. Not bad for distance, especially those two, which were the first ball and the third ball. I like it. For the price, I like it a lot. I mean, you really could kind of, not maybe a blanket, but you could throw something over all these balls. Maybe my underwear at the moment. <laughs> oh dear. Right. See, maybe there's just something in saying, hey guys, I'm using a TaylorMade 3. Not really going into the nitty gritty of what it is, like looking at that foreign alignment aid when putting, which we will come to, a little bit weak, I think it could do with a bit more colour on it, maybe a nice a thick black line, but you're not going to worry about that too much, it certainly is a straight line, so it helps you to line it up okay, maybe off the tee, but mainly for putting. Let's see what these balls are like for spin into this green from the fairway, because that is a perfect flag location to try and get a little bit of purchase. L1 left pad down, who remembers those days on Tiger Woods? Let's see how they do. And you may notice, guys, I'm really trying to put these balls through the paces a little bit more than just coming out and playing golf with them. I'm trying to play multiple shots, different shots, shots that I would try and play with a more premium ball. And just seeing if I can do that with an Amazon ball that costs pretty much a third of the price. Let's get a good lie here. And let's see if we can get a little bit of spin to this front flag. Straight away, that's launched really, really high. I don't particularly mind that because the land, it's not, it's trying to spin actually. It's still going. I'd be really interested to see where that's landed in the pitch mark and where the ball's actually finished because looking at it there, to be honest, I've hit a good drive and then I've hit, let's face it, a pretty decent approach shot. You can just see the top of the ball there that landed at the back of the green and came back down that ridge. Obviously, testing golf balls for launch angle, for spin, for control is better done out here on the golf course, I do believe, especially when you're talking short game and with wedges. And I really like to see how the ball does launch as well, because with this being the more budget golf ball, it is going to launch that bit higher. It might be more difficult to play into the wind. Can I launch this low? Yes. I lost my balance there. Oh, that one's going in the bunker. Certainly managed to launch it lower though. So if you do get the angle of attack correct and the dynamic loft right, oh, that one's gone higher again though. I feel like there wasn't a lot of difference in those shots. And that one's released out forwards. That's not come back like I would want it to. But realistically, if you're spending £16.99 on a golf ball, are you expecting 30 feet of backspin? Or are you just happy with a little bit of a drop and stop thanks to relationship between landing angle and, of course, a little bit of spin? I think I'd take it. So you can see, as we mentioned, that first ball did pitch just here and that actually took the slope and ran back. That's probably more down to the size of this slope than it is the ball spinning, but we've had to have a little bit of spin on it. And then the second ball landed here and then that's gone up the slope and come back. So it's got a nice little bit of landing angle. I don't think you're gonna get loads of spin with these balls, but like I said, would you expect that? How do they scuff up out of there? Well, I'm obviously using raw faced wedges here and you can see that is with one drive and one wedge shot. So that cover, with it not being a European cover, isn't as long a lasting cover. Is that gonna bother a lot of golfers? I think it might do actually. I don't think you wanna see new golf balls scuffing that easily on one wedge shot. What about from the sand? Guys, get in the comments below how important, we'll move that, is it for you that a golf ball doesn't kind of scuff up too much? I've played that so well. See, I would expect that to grab. Like, I know we're talking about the cover here. I think a Pro V1 or a TP5 there just grabs a little bit. We're in moist sand, so maybe not too much, but I really, really struck that well. And again, you can see that ball releasing out. That, that for me, is where you're probably going to see more of an issue. That's where it's going to cost you maybe a little bit more in your shots than just 3,000, 3,000, 300 RPM spin difference and a couple of mile an hour ball speed. How can we even get this close with this ball? Right. That took a lot more effort than if I was using a premium ball, because I think those first two do grab and stop. You'll see I've really had to get under that. I've had to swing longer and use landing angle to get that ball to stop. But 16.99, £1.42 a ball. I'll let you guys decide.
So after those bunker shots, there are a few kind of scuffs on there. Again, this is what you would expect from these golf balls. Is that going to affect performance? I don't think it realistically is. I think if you did start to really scuff it and really start hitting the same place time after time, I think that's more the paint coming off than anything else. But it might start to get a little bit annoying. These balls are exactly the same balls that you saw me get out at the start of this video. They're all the number threes from the same sleeve. And yeah, I mean, that's literally one hole of golf, isn't it? Hmm. So I did put these golf balls to the test against the TP5, which is my ball of choice in the simulator. As you can see, it didn't quite live up to it ball speed wise and spun quite a lot more, but it still carried around 270 yards, which is a decent distance, especially for that price. Guys, get in the comments below, would you pay the extra money for those extra seven yards carry, or would you be happy with that at £16 a dozen? Okay, so this is a really interesting proposition. It's 155 yards, but it's into quite a stiff breeze. I'm going to try and play a low six iron, just like a kind of three quarter one. I feel like this is the shot I would want to play here. Can I keep this ball down nice and low, or is it just going to climb from its initial launch? That's gone really high. I mean, it's all over the flag, don't get me wrong, but that isn't the ball flight that I was after. That's going to be really close. It felt and sounded a little bit different. It felt a little softer with the iron than it particularly did with the driver. Let's try and play a low one again. Again, it's absolutely all over it. I can't wait to show you where these are finished, but it's just not the, it's not the shot. The shot for me is a little bit lower here. Let's go one more and then I might go and get a more premium ball and show you exactly what I mean. Come on, low. Nope. Three very good golf shots. I'm happy with all of them, but none of them. Let me show you. Ooh, perfect, TP5. And you may well think this is me being difficult, but this is a kind of honest comparison of what you are getting for your money. So many golfers out there, why have I done that? So many golfers out there would benefit from a higher launching golf ball anyway, but if you do want to hit this shot, this is where you need to stand up and be counted, James. You probably need... Okay, it was a tiny bit lower. I mean, it's another good shot, to be honest. But you're probably going to need a urethane cover on that ball and maybe a little bit more than a two-piece ball. Let's get down there, let's see where they are. Oh, where's the... There's no shovel! Who nicks a shovel? I'm going to be honest here, just by getting the ball out here on the golf course, is there something in this? Just by getting the ball out on the golf course, I must admit, I'm really impressed with how these balls have performed. For the price, I can't knock them at all. However, we have RBZ. You guessed it, RBZ. Oh, and RBZ. Now, we spoke about spin numbers not long ago. TP5. Is that because I've got way more control of that ball? Potentially. Guys, let me know in the comments, would you game this tailor-made RBZ golf ball, the number one selling golf ball in 2023 on Amazon? Also guys, do me a favor, smash that subscribe button if you're enjoying these videos, throw a like on it, and I'll see you all exactly the same time tomorrow. Goodbye.